Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to continue to work on our first person shooter by adding an ammo drop whenever the player dies. All right, so this is how it's going to look. So whenever this player dies, they're going to drop this part. And don't worry about how it looks now. We can always make it look however we want to. But this part right here, when another player goes over it, it gives them more ammo. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start on the local script that's inside the gun. The first thing we're going to do on the script is not going to be directly related to the ammo drop, but what we're going to do is make a function that will update the ammo GUI. So basically it's going to do this line right here. So rather than having that long line in a couple different spots in the game, we're just going to make a function to do it, and then we can just use the function to update it later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another section right here. I'm just going to call this update ammo function. And for this function, we're just going to say local function. The name of it can be update ammo. And we're just going to put this line inside right here. So I'm just going to copy it and paste it. And now what we can do anytime we have this line right here, we can replace that line with the function name, which is update underscore ammo. And the way we're going to change this one down here at the bottom is we're going to get rid of all this stuff. And then inside the parentheses here, we're just going to put the function's name. We're going to come back to the script later on, but for now we're going to head over to the leaderboard script. Okay, so on this script, what we're going to do is create a function that's going to create that block whenever the player dies. So let's go ahead and just make a section right above the death tracker. And we can just call this ammo drop. For this function, we're going to say local function. The name of the function can be drop underscore ammo. This function is going to take in a parameter we're going to call death position. Don't worry about this part right now, we're going to define this variable later on. So inside this function, we're going to start by waiting for one second. After that, we're going to say local ammo is going to be equal to instance dot new. Inside the parentheses, we're going to be creating a new part. Next, we're going to say ammo dot parent, and we're going to set this equal to game dot workspace. We'll say ammo dot position is going to be equal to the death position. Then we're going to say ammo dot name. For the name, we could just say ammo drop. And that's all we're going to add for now. Later on, we're going to be writing a script that we're going to be attaching to this part. But for now, we'll just go ahead and move on, and then we'll add that script later on. Okay, so we're going to add a line to the death tracker right here. So remember, this keeps track of when the player dies. So this would be a good spot to put our function call. So what we're going to do inside this function is just make another line. So we can just write it right here. And what we want to do is call the function, which just means run the function. So we're going to say drop underscore ammo. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put the player's position when they die. And that position is going to be stored in death underscore position. Okay, so the player's position is going to be equal to character dot humanoid root part and then off the humanoid root part we want to get the position which is going to be dot and then position and I just noticed that we don't want to add this line right here we want to add it inside of this function right here which is when the humanoid died so I'm just going to copy this line and then paste it inside of this function instead So just a quick review of this function. This line right here waits for the player to join the game. This line waits for the character to get added. After that, we're waiting for the humanoid to die. When the humanoid dies, we're going to run this function right here. We're going to send the player's position. And that position is going to get stored in this variable right here. And then what we're doing is we're creating a new part. We're putting that in the workspace. And then we're creating that part at the position of the player's death. All right, so let's go ahead and run the code and see if this part is working. Okay, and when this player dies, you see the part spawns into the game. 
So the next thing we need to do is write a script so that when the player touches it, it increases the player's ammo. Okay, so the script we're going to write for the ammo drop is going to go under the server storage. So go ahead and just insert a script and call it ammo drop. So for the script, we're going to start by saying local ammo. And this is going to be equal to script dot parent. Next, we're going to be using a remote event to be able to update the player's ammo. So to do that, we need to add another remote event inside of replicated storage. So inside of replicated storage, just go ahead and add another remote event and call it ammo pickup. It's important that you rename this to this name because we're going to be referencing it by the name in the script. So make sure under replicated storage, you add a remote event and rename it to ammo pickup. Okay, after you do that, we're going to say local replicated storage. And this is going to be equal to game colon get service. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put replicated storage. After that, we'll say local, and then we'll just say ammo event. Make sure I spell ammo correctly. And we're going to set this equal to replicated storage. We'll say colon, wait for child. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put the name of the remote event, which is ammo pickup. After that, we're going to create a function that will run whenever the part gets touched. So we'll say local function. The name of the function can be ammo underscore pickup. Inside the parentheses, we're going to pass other part. Now inside this function, we're going to start by saying local humanoid is equal to other part dot parent. And then we'll say colon find first child. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put humanoid. After that, we're going to create a variable for the player. So we'll say local player is equal to game dot players colon find first child. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put other part dot parent dot name. And then if we're able to find the humanoid part, so we have a humanoid object and the player exists, then what we're going to do is we're going to say local gun, and that's going to be equal to humanoid dot parent colon find first child. And what we're going to be looking for is just a tool. So instead of saying find first child, we're going to say find first child, which is a so th this looks for a type of object. And the type of object that we're going to be looking for is a tool. Then if we're able to find the gun, what we're going to do is say ammo event, colon, fire client. We need to pass which client, so that's going to be player. And then after that, we're going to destroy the ammo pickup by saying ammo colon and destroy. All right, so this line right here is kind of assuming that the gun is going to be in the player's hand. If the player unequips the weapon, then we would need to check for it in the backpack as well. But I think this is a good start. And then if we need to, we'll add that other check later on. Okay, so at the end here, we just want to say ammo dot touched colon connect. And then we're going to be connecting this with our function, which is ammo underscore pickup. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is attach the script to the part whenever it gets created. So to do that, we're going to head back to our leaderboard script. And inside of our ammo drop function, we're going to add a couple more lines. So we'll say local ammo script. This is going to be equal to game dot server storage. Inside the server storage, we're going to say find first child. And then we're going to be looking for ammo drop. And then we're going to say colon and clone to make a copy of it. And then we'll say ammo script dot parent is equal to ammo. So this line creates a copy of the script. And then by saying ammo script dot parent, we're setting where it's going to be located. And we want to attach it to the ammo part that we created up here. And finally, on the client side, what we want to do is whenever the remote event gets triggered, we want to update the ammo GUI to display the correct ammo information. 
So we're going to head back to the local script that's inside the gun. And on this script, the first thing we need to do is add the remote event to this section right here. So we'll say local ammo event is going to be equal to replicated storage colon wait for child. Here we're going to be waiting for ammo pickup. And then we're going to head to the very bottom of the script. And down under this section right here, we're going to say ammo event dot on client event. And then we're going to connect this with a function. Inside this function, what we're going to do is we're going to say gun dot max ammo dot value is going to be equal to the original value. plus 10. So this value right here you can adjust depending on how much ammo you want to give the player. And finally we'll just update the ammo GUI by calling the function. So we'll just say update underscore ammo. And that's kind of the nice thing about doing that function rather than having that long stream of code which I noticed that we didn't update it right here. So let's fix that real quick. So instead of that we're just going to say update ammo. So like I was saying rather than have that big string of code we can just call the function and the function will handle it up top. All right, so let's go and run the code and check it out just to make sure we didn't make any mistakes. Okay, so the part still gets created. So let's see if I touch the part, if I get more ammo. All right, so everything looks good. So you can see at the bottom right-hand corner for the ammo GUI, it went from 15 to 25. So that means it's increasing. So let's just go ahead and try it one more time. All right, so everything looks good. So before we end with this video, let's go ahead and take a look and see how we can customize this part. All right, so any customizing that you want to do for this part is going to occur in this function right here. So I'm just going to give you a couple examples. So some different things you can do are change the size and change the color. So let's go ahead and say ammo dot size, and it's going to be equal to a vector three dot new. And let's go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. So let's try two by two by two. And also let's change the color. So let's say ammo dot brick color. And let's set this equal to brick color dot new. And then we'll just choose a random color. Let's do maybe green. And let's go ahead and try that out and see how it looks. All right. And now you can see for the ammo drop, it has a green color and it's also a different shape. So I'm going to leave it up to you guys to design it however you want to. It's also possible to create a model and store it in replicated storage and then clone it and bring it into the game. So if that's something you guys are interested in, let me know and we can do a video on that. For now though, this is going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.